Today we're going to be going through, I think this is our third lesson in discovering your ministry, discovering your gifts. And what I've been teaching to you out of our, uh, of our, our new members manual from many years ago when we had the three-month-long new members class, and there was a workbook that went together with that, that Dr. Hodge wrote. And so he gave that book to me a while back, and um, I didn't really know where I was going to use it. And then the Holy Spirit reminded me that I had that book. Uh, while we, I had finished the last semester of Back to Basics. And so that was a blessing from heaven because he, that just showed me what to teach next. And as I went through the book, boy, is it chunked full of material that is so good. You know, our pastor is a wonderful man of God. And so thank God we have his teachings as well. And they're from the Bible, of course, which is the uncompromised word of God. And if it's in the word, we believe it. We put it into use. Hallelujah. So um, if you're joining us live right now, we have a live chat going on, um, and it's at www.lpcc.tv. That's our uh, Cyber Church uh, website. And um, if you ever want to join us, if you're watching this on replay or on the archives and you want to join us for the live chat that goes on at the same time, um, we meet at 4 o'clock on Sundays, but we will not be here next week. So don't forget, next week is Mother's Day, so we won't have Back to Basics next week, okay? All right, so in the chat room, you will see there's a link into our lesson outline, and that way you can open it and join me today as we go through these things. First, I want to review a little bit. Um, last week, we talked about uh, my shape would determine my ministry. And what is shape is an acronym, and for each letter, it represents something. So for S, we have spiritual gifts, which we're going to talk about today. For H, we have heart. And that's what's in your heart. How do you discover your ministry? These are the ways that you just determine your ministry. It's by your spiritual gifts, by your heart. What's in your heart? What did God put in you, in your heart? What, what's a desire in there that you, it's just you're, you're moved with compassion on certain things. Certain things move you. That's another, th that's another thing to look, look at to discover your, to determine your ministry. So, and then A is abilities, your natural abilities that God gave you. And P is for personality. E is for experiences. Now, we went over that last week, and you can find that message in our archives. Feel free to review it. Go back anytime you want. All of our Back to ba Basics lessons are free and um, at no charge for you, Cyber Church, because we love you, and we want you to have the Word of God and good teaching to grow and mature and develop in your walk with God because we all want to fulfill the plan the Master has for us, right, because he's coming soon. Now, it's not, easy, it's not hard to tell. Look around you at the things going on in the earth and compare it to Matthew 24 and the different places in the scripture where it talks about that we're in the last days. You know we're in the last days, beloved. So it, we don't have time to waste. We want to get into the place that God has called us to take our rightful place in the body of Christ and operate and function there and contribute from ourselves, our, our spiritual gift. We, we need to contribute to the kingdom of God in whatever way God has called you to do that. And for every one of us, that's different. We all have different anointings. We all have different gift sets. We all have uh, different personality sets. We've had experiences. And, 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 and the way that God has woven us together, we're a beautiful tapestry for him. And he wants to use us in all of the things that we do. So so he wants us to, to, to use these things and employ them as a service to one another. That's what the Bible says. Employ your gifts as a service to one another, one another in the spirit of love, of course. So we've been talking about this. And in your notes, one of the primary ways you learn about spiritual gifts is by getting involved in ministry. Many people try to figure out their gift and then get into ministry. And what I'm saying is the exact opposite. As you get into ministry, you will find out what you are gifted at. 
You are not going to discover your gift just by going through a list and understanding it. It's by practice, darlings. It's by experience. It's as you as you move. You know, it used to be that I had a car that had a clutch, you know, a, a manual, stick, shift, whatever. And sometimes if it if it wouldn't turn on, I would have to pop the clutch to get it to move. And the car had automatic power steering and you know, that was a real important detail. You had to have the car, the car had to be turned on to get it to turn. But if it wasn't turning on, you had to push it, <laughs> and then you had to crank that steering wheel, try to move it, so you could pop the clutch to get the car to move. And once, the, once it started, then it turned really easy. You could move the wheel and turn it and get it to move where you wanted it to. So my point in saying that to you is that, that is a lot like how we are as people. You know, if you're just parked and you're not doing anything, then you're not exercising any of your spiritual gifts for the Lord. How do you even know what your gift is if you haven't even gotten started yet? So we, the, that's the first thing, and we talked about that last, last week, and we'll review that too, is that by, you have to get started, started. And there's an acronym for that as well, of course, because this is Dr. Hodge's teachings, right? So he's the acronym man. He's the point principle man. He'll give those points to you, and so I've got them for you, too. Glory. Number one is S for study. All right, so that's one way we find out our gifting is by studying. T is for trial and error, and this is more important. The way you're going to discover your spiritual gift is simply by getting out there and experimenting with different areas of service. And that's why I have compared it to the analogy of the car is because until I could pop that clutch, I couldn't really get that steering wheel to move right. But once I got the car moving, praise the Lord, and the engine was running, then I could steer the car easily. And that's how it is for us. So God is going to be able to direct you into the areas in, that he's called you to as you step out in faith and just start. You just got to start where you are. Use what you have. Do what you can. But do something. Do something. You can all do something. We can all do something. This is part of my sacrifice, but there's more that's, that I have to do than what you see, and we all have our parts to contribute. This is what makes the body of Christ so powerful. It's active. It, everything is, every joint supplies, and we're interdependent on one another. And so uh, when I don't use my spiritual gift, I'm actually robbing another part of the body of Christ of my ministry, and they're suffering for it because really nobody can can do your part but you. Now, your assignment might be given to another, but they're not going to do it like you would have done it. And you're still going to be held accountable for not doing it because it's an assignment from heaven. And we all have them, and so we're in the process of discovering them one day at a time, one step at a time, one mistake sometimes at a time. But the Lord is faithful. See, he loves us, and he's called us with a calling that's holy. And it's right. And he knows the beginning. He knows the end from the beginning. So once he's called you, he's equipped you in any area. It's not just pulpit ministry. What you can see, there's so many things that need to be done for God's kingdom in any area, in your area, in that what he's gifted you in. And so S is for study. This is how to discover your gift. Um, T is for trial and error. And I talked about that. A is for analyze. You know, take a look at your gifts and, and see what you're naturally inclined to do, your spiritual giftings as we go through this. And um, you can do number R, I mean number, R is not a number. R in start is request responses from others. There are people who know you really well. As you begin to see some things that you're more acclimated to and that fits your personality type and that sort of thing, um, you know, ask those people who know you well and, and love you and care about you. Hey, do you, what do you see in me? I, I, I think I see this, this, and this. What do you think? And they might say, girl, you just, you know, you are administrative. <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is. You are a music machine. <laughs> whatever. They'll confirm the gift a lot of times. But see, it's in its baby stage right now. And this is an important detail to, to, to look at. As we go through the gifts, remember, you might, you're still in seed form in a lot of these areas. And you, everybody has a gift. Everybody has at least one. But some have 10, some have 20. Remember the pa parable in the Bible of the, of the, of the, the, the talents. The, the man with the one talent, and he hid it, right? And the one with the 10, and he multiplied it and got 20. 
See, we, we are to use them and exercise them and develop them. That's what we're called to do. Amen. So our request responses from others in T is take training. You, you develop your gift through training, and I can testify to that. Amen. There are three ways that God wants to use you to use your gifts. And here, and this is, uh, these are good guidelines right here. Number one is through an ongoing ministry on a weekly or biweekly basis. Every week I serve in a certain area in cyber church here for you, of course, on our services. And there's other people who are serving that you don't see behind the scenes, people with the audio in our media department. You know, my husband, Elder John, you don't see him much, but he is the technical. He's the guy that's, he, him and the Holy Ghost <laughs> is the glue that sticks everything together, boy, and make these things happen so that you can be blessed. And these broadcasts are going out all over the world. Hallelujah. The whole wide world is being reached with this gospel. See, what you're a part of is so big. It's so much bigger than the part that you play. We all have a part to play. What we're a part of is God's kingdom, building God's kingdom. Here in our local church at Living Praise Christian Center or where you attend, we are building God's kingdom together. Amen. So it's through an ongoing ministry on a weekly or biweekly basis through short-term projects. You know, maybe it's just a, a once a year, you know, we have things here where we'll, we'll do our shoe drive and for souls for souls and um, different things that we do. So you can volunteer that. And through spontaneous situations, the Lord himself will anoint you to spontaneous meet a need in the local church and in areas wherever you are, as God calls them. If you see a, there's a need, God will anoint you to fill and meet that need, to be of assistance to that, to your job. God will help you on your job. Do you know your spiritual gift can help you even in the workplace? Amen. Well, let's, instead of going through all of that, let me get into the meat here. It is easier to discover your gift through ministry than to discover your ministry through your gift. All right, so we're going to talk about unwrapping our gifts. The Bible does not lock us into tight restrictions um, as to the number of spiritual gifts or, e or even their definitions. And this is really important. I want you to understand that. Just because we didn't find what your gift is in the Bible word for word doesn't mean it's not from God, doesn't mean that it's not a true spiritual gift from the Holy Ghost to help his kingdom. So they're, they're not all listed there. There's myriads of spiritual gifts. I mean, you know, so find yourself in the way God has put you together in these explanations. They're going to help you. This list is going to help you. I listed here, if you look in your notes, um, there are four main passages. There are others also, but there's four in the New Testament that um, reference and illustrate spiritual gifts. Now, um, Romans 12 is about spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 is as well, but we're talking about the gifts of the Spirit there. And that's as the Spirit wills. Though he may be more apt to use you in, the area, in certain areas than others, he's not in a box, and he can use anybody any way he wants to in, at any time that he wants to as they yield, right? So we don't want to put him in a box, and I don't want you to be stuck in a rut and say, oh, wow, it's not in the Bible. I can't find my gift in the Bible. That's okay. It may not all be in there, but we'll give you some examples that will help you. So, but 1 Corinthians 12 is about spiritual, is about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4 is the fivefold ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Those are our governmental gifts. Those are the gifts that, that the head of the church, Jesus, he uses these gifts to steer the church, to, to lead them, to set government in local churches and, and, and uh, para-church ministries that are there to be of help and assistance to the local church. So everything is to fit together because we are one universal body of Christ. And there are lots of us, and we all are called to this one body of Christ. There are local ministries that are do, doing different assignments for communities and, and, and locations. And they have God assignments from heaven to fulfill to a certain people um, something God is trying to do and work through them. And as you know, not every church is the same. And they do things different, and, and ch different churches do things differently, and that's not a bad thing. As long as we're following the Bible, as long as we're following the, the leading of the Holy Spirit, we're going to be different. 
There's different flavors, if you will, on ministries, just like you are different. There's Every church is different and has its own, if you will, personality. So wherever you have been planted and where God has connected you, get involved in your local church and help serve God's kingdom that way. And as you do, you will find yourself growing and maturing faster than if you don't see. It's just like physical exercise. This is our part of the ministry where we exercise. We eat and are fed the word by getting into our own personal private study time. When we come together as a local congregation, we, we get into the mix of the kononia of the thing, of, of that divine fellowship of the Holy Spirit and on the believers. It's a supernatural experience. And you know how you get, there's a lot of emotional needs that get met, spiritual needs that get met. And it's from one another. There's just something supernatural and powerful and beautiful about the body of Christ coming together. And as each part comes, and as we bring our gifts and yield and submit to the Lord and serve, then he gets the glory. He's able to use us and develop us and help increase us more and more on every side. So we want to find our place and get busy. And it starts start somewhere. So we went through the acronym START, right? I'm going to review that right now. Steady, trial and error, trial and error, analyze, request, take training. Okay? So let's get into the gifts. What about them? I'm going to... Um, I'm going to just read Romans 12. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do this. If you look in your notes on the outline, if the scriptures that I, that I listed for you that have the gifts that I referred to um, is Romans 12, 6 through 8, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 through 12, and Ephesians 4, 11, 1 Peter 4, 11. Okay, that's the scripture references that you can check out. And they're in your notes as well. What I would like to do is to get into the four categories because this is meaty, and I, and I think that this is going to help you a lot. We have categorized the list of gifts that they had there. And there's other places all throughout the Bible where they talk about so many different gifts that we didn't even have room to put them all here. These are just some examples. And I'll give you some more as we go. Um, but what I want you to do, <clears throat> the way we that Dr. Hodge designed this um, to help you is to organize these gifts into and and into a list that fall into four category category categories that our church is pr trying to fulfill these four purposes. Okay, and that is number one to celebrate God's presence, and that's through worship. Number two is demonstrating God's love, and that is through ministry. Ministry. Remember, we've studied this in the past at great length. Ministry. Is serving. That's what it means. Educate God's people is number three. Discipleship. That's discipleship. Number four, communicate God's word. That's evangelism. So all these gifts are going to fall into one of these categories so that you can see how they apply to our lo local ministry here. And if, and if living praise isn't your home church, you, you can see where these gifts maybe line up with the church that you attend. And let me tell you, if you don't attend a local church, darling, Join Cyber Church. We can be a bridge for you until you find the church that God has for you. Everybody needs a local church. This is, Cyber Church is a supplement and a bridge. And we're here to keep you connected to God and to your pastors and church family. It's the next best thing to be in here. But see, God does want all of us to find a local church and get involved and serve and love. It's give of our time, our talent, and our treasure. It's the will of God to be around other believers, but there are some places in this world where that's not possible, and that's where we have cyber church. Or maybe in your circumstances right now, that's not a possibility for you. You still need to be fed the word. This is why we have cyber church. Join cyber church. That's a plug for cyber church ministry membership. Yes, amen. All right. Everything we do at LPCC fits under one of the four purposes that I've given you. The gifts of the Spirit are given to help fulfill these purposes, and we've categorized the um, what gifts help fulfill each purpose. So number one, <clears throat> and as we go through this list, check off your first initial impression. It's that first impression of yourself. Remember, you can have many gifts, and there's no, so what if you're not right? <laughs> if you think you're right, then just write it down. Okay, amen. Number one, 
gifts that communicate God's word both to believers and to unbelievers because there are separate functions, okay? And under that, we have preaching. Here's a spiritual gift called preaching. Also, prophecy. Prophecy and preaching a lot of times are uh, intertransmittable in, in the New Testament because it says here, he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. And that's in 1 Corinthians 14, 3. And that's what the teacher is supposed to, uh, preaching is supposed to build up. It's to edify, exhort, and to comfort. Amen. So that's one gift. Another is evangelism. The ability to communicate the good news of Jesus Christ to believers in a positive, non-threatening way. The ability to sense opportunities to share Christ and lead people to respond with faith. You may have the gift of evangelism, but your personality may be introverted. So it's going to show up in a different way. You're not going to be like everybody else. You're you. You're perfectly designed to be you. Your personality, your gifting, it's all meant to go together. So just because you may, you may have the gift of evangelism, your presentation just might be different than somebody else's. It's in your, those who want to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's in them to always thinking of the lost, how people feel about a certain environment and being comfortable in that environment and winning the lost. He who wins souls is wise. We're all to do the work of an evangelist, but some people have this gift in them real strong. Um, many of you have this gift, but you just don't know it. You have a real heart to share Christ with other people, but you're going to do this in ways that are consistent with your personality. All right, you might not stand up in a corner on a soapbox and preach from the corner, but you might, maybe, maybe you might talk to somebody in the hallway at school, right? So we're going to do it our way. We're going to fulfill God's plan our way. Here's another gifting is missions. And that's the ability to adapt to a different culture in order to reach unbelievers and believers from that culture. <clears throat> and uh, there's a reference here listed for you, 1 Corinthians 9.19. Or 9, through 22, and this is the Apostle Paul talking about how he did this, and he was a missionary to the Gentiles. This is what he said, for though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself a servant unto all, that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews, to them that are under the law as of being under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, to them that are without law as without law not being without law to God, but under the law to Christ, that I might win them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. And then Pastor wrote, you don't have to go overseas to exercise this gift. The world has come to America. You don't have to... You don't become a missionary by crossing the sea. You become a missionary by seeing the cross. <laughs> Amen to that. So praise the Lord. So, yeah, it's just that ability to adapt to different cultures and reach the, the believers and unbelievers from that culture. And not everybody can do that. It's a gift from heaven. Amen. Here's another gift, apostle. This is one of the fivefold ministry gifts, the ability to start new churches. Our pastor operates in this anointing as it stands in the office of an apostle as he starts new churches and oversees their development. This is part of what he does. The apostle Paul was, was obviously an apostle. And um, he said his ambition was not to build on another man's foundation. Today, we don't call these people apostles. We call them church planters. And do you know what I heard now? So this isn't in the notes, but I also heard that um, a lot of times people misunderstand and mistake a, a, a missionary for an, apo an apostle, you know, a missionary, thinking they're just a missionary to go to another region and to reach other people for Christ, but they may have the gift of an apostle to go and establish churches there and start works where there is no work. An apostle is a sent one. They go to places where there are no other works, and they build works, set works. So see, again, it may show up in a different personality type or a different uh, manifestation of it, but the outcome, the fruit, will be the same. And that's how you identify a lot of these gifts is the fruit. And you'll, you'll see that as we go. <clears throat> All right, so here um, uh, Dr. Hodge wrote, the apostles in the body of Christ are God's entrepreneurs. 
They can make something out of nothing. So these are gifts that communicate God's word to both believers and unbelievers. And who are they again? Let's look at this in review. We have preaching. That's one of the gifts that communicate the word to both believers and unbelievers. Preaching, evangelism, evangelism, missions, and apostle. So those are gifts that communicate God's word to believers and to unbelievers. All right. And our next set are gifts that educate God's people. Yay, I'm in, I'm in here. <laughs> Teaching, that's me. That's what I do. The ability to educate God's people by clearly explaining the Bible in a way that causes them to understand. It is the ability to equip and train other believers for ministry, which doesn't mean I can't teach unbelievers, but usually when you're teaching, when you're teaching the Bible, you're usually teaching it to believers. This is a gift that really has to be developed. Amen to that. One of the ways teachers often teach is very systematic. They think in organized ways. They think in lists. Some of you think in lists, and that might be a sign that you are a teacher. Do you know I've been a teacher since I was born? <laughs> I always knew I was a teacher. I was going to be a teacher or a counselor. That's what I figured in junior high. It just was in me as a little kid. I used to try to teach everybody how to do everything. And they tell me that in the reunions and stuff. And so whatever, see, that gifts that God put it, puts in you, they might show up differently than what your idea about it is. But if you look back over your history and how you've grown and developed, how you were as a kid and things you, you know, you, you can identify sometimes. Oh, I see that way back there. That's what that was. But I just didn't put my finger on it. I didn't connect the two. But, it, yeah, that was me just, I wasn't necessarily bossy. I was just a teacher. <laughs> Maybe you were bossy. <laughs> I was a little bossy. But um, I think a part, most of it was just that ability to want to teach. I wanted to teach and communicate. I taught my little brother to read and my kids to read. And anyway, so I say all that to say that's how it worked for me. Now look at your life, and then use, you can see how God has put you together, perhaps. The Holy Spirit, I've already prayed that he would show you. And this is going to help bring up some things in your remembrance of how th when, when you were young, things that you did and the ways that the gift started to make itself known to you. And as you go now, because what you knew then and what you know now, they're going to they're going to come together and amalgamize. You're, a, you're like a finely woven garment. God's got, you're beautiful people. God has put us together so wonderfully. And it's all for his glory. It's for his purposes, for his plan, to do his will. Woo! Which is going to fulfill us completely. Amen. All right, so that's teaching. Encouragement. Some translations call it exhortation. All right, so this is another gift. This is the gift that educates God's people as well. The ability to, ability to motivate God's people to apply and act on biblical pr principles, especially when they are discouraged or wavering in their faith. The ability to bring out the best in others and challenge them to develop their pot potential. The difference between somebody who has the gift of encouragement and somebody who has the gift of teaching is that teachers typically focus on the context of this text, the story itself. I can testify that that is true. Those with the gift of exhortation or encouragement focus on the principles of the text. This is our pastor, Dr. Hodge. Oh, is he an encourager? Amen. And he's an apt to teach, absolutely, but you, more so than not. He's, he's that principle extractor. He'll take a scripture and he'll be able to teach principles out of, a, you know, one verse for, you know, three months. <laughs> principle after principle. And that's, that's our Dr. Hodge. Well, that's his gifting. That's in his gift set, that encouragement. Whereas, whereas I, I'm, I'm different. I'm teacher. I, and so give me that same passage and I will teach you what that means from the text and how to break that down. And let the Holy Spirit, and how that compares with other scriptures, that's just the way my gift expresses itself. But see, they all educate God's people. They're just different gift sets. So hopefully this is helping you. I believe it is in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And to all my people in the, in the chat room, I'm greeting you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If you're walk, watching um, on replay or in the archives, we have that live chat going on I was telling you about. So that is who I'm saying hi to all my cyber church homies in the cyber sanctuary today. Hello. All right. So now let's go to the next one. 
So there are three gifts that support teachers and encouragers. The teachers and encouragers are the ones who build up and educate God's people. So the three gifts that support them are wisdom, discernment, and knowledge. Praise God. Wisdom, the ability to understand God's perspective on life situations and share those insights in a simple, understandable way. The ability to explain what to do and how to do it. One of the characteristics I found in people who have the gift of wisdom is to, to memorize scripture. This is what pastor said. Um, and how they want to hide it in their hearts. And I find it's true even in, on my, it, for me. And I, and I flow in the gift of wisdom often. And there is that desire to memorize scripture because you just want to make sure that you have that in, hidden in your heart so you can pull it out at the right time. These people are gentle and know how to be patient, and they understand the ways of God. Okay, that's wisdom. Discernment, <clears throat> the ability to distinguish right from wrong, truth from error. You just know, and you probably know people like this. It, it's just black and white with them. Prophets have a lot of, have, walk a lot in discernment. It's just knowing God's way of doing things and what's right and wrong. It's just clear, crystal clear. Also speaks of spiritual discernment in the areas of, of spiritual entities. For, and here in your notes, it says to give, an ev to give an evaluation based on God's word. The ability to discern whether the source of an experience is Satan, self, or God's spirit. And that is not always easy to do. You need the Holy Spirit to give you discernment. At times, it is to see into the spirit realm and discern what type of spirit is present in any circumstance or conversation. This gift protects the church from getting off into extremes. Some of you have this gift, but you're not able to use it because you don't have enough Bible under your belt yet to know what God has said. As you understand the word of God more and more, uh, I'm sorry, more and study more, the gift is going to blossom in your life. Many of you have this gift, but you haven't been able to develop it because you don't have enough Bible content. Amen. So get into the Word, all you people. <laughs> we must stay in the Word of God. To, and, you know, it's true that um, when you need discernment, the Holy Spirit will bring it to you. But that the, as you spend that time in the Word of God daily, it does sharpen your gifting. It's kind of like a pencil sharpener in the spirit. It sharpens your gift, reading the word of God. Amen. So I want to encourage you to stay in the word no matter what. You could read a chapter a day. Read a verse a day if you want to do it that way and just chew on it. Just think about each, you know, but just don't let a day go by where you haven't taken time to spend time in God's word. It is the living word of God. It's alive, you know, and full of power, active, operative, energizing, effective. And you need that power in your life. And uh, nobody can do your eating for you. We're not going to force feed you. <laughs> Amen. You have to be a willing participant. Here we go. The next gift is knowledge. The ability to discover, collect, analyze, and organize information that is vital to individual believers or the entire church family. It is the ability to comprehend a large amount of information and provide it when needed for effective decision making. And the example that we have here is from Daniel, Daniel chapter 1, verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. Who gave it to them? God gave it to them. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And then there's more gifts that we haven't even listed. All right? So praise the Lord. God gives knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. This is a gift from God. The Bible is very strong in making decisions based on knowledge. When you read Proverbs, it says, get the facts. Don't just depend on feelings. People with this gift love to study, read, organize, proofread, curriculum write, and data entry. That doesn't mean you like all that stuff because I tell you, I don't like all that stuff. And... Um, and, and I have, and I, and I, I think this was part of what goes in my gift set as a teacher. And I thought, well, I don't like data entry. <laughs> but see, that's why we have to look at all things in balance as we go through these. Listen, let the Holy Spirit talk to you because you're not going to be an exact copy of anybody else or exactly what we're saying here. But it's going to represent, you're going to get a good idea. 
it's going to give you an overall picture so that you can take this and use it for in, in locating yourself. Amen? All right, so these gifts, wisdom, discernment, and knowledge are often given in addition to the gift of teaching or encouragement. Amen. So number three in your notes, I think I'm in page four already, is um, gifts that demonstrate God's love. Gifts that demonstrate God's love. The first one is service. I am married to the serviceman of the year. I'm telling you. Anyway. This is what service is, the ability in services ministry to recognize unmet needs in the church family and underline this, take the initiative to provide practical assistance quickly, cheerfully, and without a need for recognition. The Bible has called all of us to serve and have a servant's heart. Those with the gift of service do not have to be asked. If they see a need, they immediately take charge and start doing it. If they walk in the room and chairs aren't set up, nobody has to ask them to set up the chairs. They just immediately start setting them up. It may be manual help. It may be physical help or spiritual help. The motivation of the people with the gift of service is, I want to be helpful. These people have no need to be seen, and in fact, they don't want to be up front. They don't want to be on stage. They seem to have a spiritual antenna that is alert. They catch stuff. I'm telling you, I married this guy. I know. When they see a need, they immediately move into action and take the initiative. Often they have high energy and are very practical and efficient at physical tasks. They They feel much fulfilled, or there's much fulfillment, I guess is a better way of saying it, assisting people who are in the more visible roles. These people typically are unselfish and are unwilling to do whatever, and excuse me because that's not what it says, are very unselfish, and are willing <laughs> to do whatever it takes. They don't, like, they don't feel like anything is below them. They realize it is all God's work, and whatever you do, you do it for the Lord. That is the gift of service, and such an important gift. I mean, really, Johnny on the spot. It's just these people, it's, it's like the Holy Spirit shows them ahead of time what needs to be done, and they do it, and it and it saves the service or whatever. Just little things. This is just, this is a gift from God. Somehow they just, not only responding to spontaneous need, but it gets to the point where there's, uh, in this, they somehow know what to do, when to do it, and it, it's practical to them, but I don't think that way. I wouldn't have thought that. Elder John just floors me constantly. The way he sees things is so different than the way I see things. Our motivation is both the same. We're both here to serve and, and, and do our best that way. But it's just uh, so practical to him. And I'm thinking, that's Holy Ghost. <laughs> I would never have thought of that. That was Holy Ghost. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, so practical to him because that's his gift. So amen. So that's another one. Okay, mercy. Here we go. This is a good one too. Uh, many of you have this one. And and I'm not talking about codependency. They are very different. Side note. All right, mercy. The ability to detect hurt and empathize with those who are suffering. The ability to provide compassionate and cheerful support to those experiencing distress, crisis, or pain. The best example of somebody with the gift of mercy would be the Good Samaritan. And I want to read this story. Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down, and this is in Luke 10, 30 through 35 for your notes. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance, there came down a certain priest that way, a priest. Yeah, it says a priest. And when he saw him, shocking, this is shocking, He passed by on the other side. You know what I'd say? Fired! I'm not God, but yeah, shocking. All right, so the priest went, passed by on the other side. Didn't even help him. And likewise, a Levite, this is a worshiper, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him. Oh, so he came and looked at him and passed by on the other side. Rude. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him. I love that part. He went to him. 
didn't pass by the other side. He went to him and bound up his wounds, hallelujah, pouring in oil and wine. He made sure he was ministered to. Hallelujah. Sat him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Wasn't too much trouble, was it? He, he put him on his own beast. He ministered to his wounds. He bound, his, bound him up so he would be clean and secure and took him where he would be safe. And then he took care of him when he was there for a whole night anyway. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him. And whatever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Remember the story? This is Dr. Hodges writing. This cracks me up. He just came, picked up the guy at the side of the road, took him to the local Holiday Inn, left his American Express card and said, whatever it takes, I will pay for it and cover it. These people have a great ability to empathize, but you notice he was a doer. A mercy shower isn't somebody who just says, oh, no, no, no. They get in there and they, they, they minister to that need. They meet that need. We're all called to do what we're called to do. We're all called to show mercy, that's for sure. But some people have this as a natural, this is their spiritual gift. Amen. But we're all called to show mercy. This is the same with all of these. You know, you can take these and say, well, that's not my gift. I'm not going to do it. And be so off base because your primary responsibility, of course, is to fulfill. Find your gift and, and, and find your ministry and, and unto the Lord as a living sacrifice. Offer yourself and your gift to him and serve. Amen. But the second thing is to respond to a spontaneous need. We are all called to do that. We are all called to help. All of us. Amen. All right. The next one is hospitality. And I'm going to have to hurry. The ability to make others, especially strangers, feel warmly welcomed. This is not natural for a lot of people. There's a lot of really cool, cold people out there who don't know how to make you feel warm and welcome. But there's some, I'll tell you, I just love to be around. It's like every time I see a certain person I'm thinking right now, I just want to go up to her and stand by her because she's so sweet and hospitable. She hugs me and does I mean, tell me these sweet things. She's just got this gift for hospitality. She makes you feel accepted. She's loving. It's just, it's her gift. Anyway, so here it says, the ability to coordinate factors that promote fellowship. Amen. You can always tell someone who has the gift of hospitality as you immediately feel comfortable around them. There's a difference between entertaining and showing hospitality. I put that in. A person could entertain you in their home, and the whole time you feel like they are uptight. Someone with a genuine gift of hospitality can make you feel comfortable no matter how the house looks. They have a way of putting you at ease. People with the gift of hospitality are often good conversational, conversationalists. They know how to bring out the best in other people and have a great concern for your comfort. Are you comfortable? Is everything okay? They're interested in that. They often use their homes as ministry tools, and they love to provide meals and service for others. They just have the ability to provide an atmosphere that everyone can enjoy. Some people just have the ability to relax you and make you smile. If you have the gift of hospitality, we need you in the greeters department. <laughs> you are a perfect fit. It's a match made from heaven. Yep, if this is your gift, you will love greeting at the door. Join our greeters department and start loving on these people. Let your gift just be used, and you'll be so satisfied, and we will love it. <laughs> and it's going to minister to us. Amen. I love the gift of hospitality. Hallelujah. Greeters are our first line of defense, our first impression, and you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Amen? All right, so the next gift that we're going to go through is giving. Yep, it's a gift. Yep. We're all called to give, but there are some who have a ministry of giving. And what does that look like? Well, it's the ability to, generous, to generously contribute material, material resources and or money beyond the tithe, so that the body may grow and be strengthened. The ability to earn and manage money so that it may be given to support the ministry of others. These people love to give. They uh, Have you ever been around somebody who has the gift of healing? I mean, the gift of giving? You can tell. They are typically happy people. They're, um, the pastor says they're typically the happiest people around. They're happy, joyful, cheerful. 
Often they are very successful in business. And this is the way it works because you can't be a, a giver and not be a reaper, right? If you sow, you're going to reap. If you're a giver, you're going to be a receiver because God is never going to let you outbeat him in, his, in your giving. Radical givers, boy, I'll tell you what, they are blessed. I'm talking about radical givers. I'm not talking about tipping God and just doing a little bit here and there and when I can afford it. Nope, I'm talking about the ministry of giving. Of course, we're all called to sacrifice with our giving. This is, we're all called to do that. But this is a going at just another level because it's this natural thing. A lot of times, these are the people who know how to make money. Money just comes to them, and it's because they're givers. And, I mean, look at J.C. Penney. He was a, a little boy, learned about tithing. And what did he do? He, had a, he, he, uh, he got a lawnmower, and he started mowing lawns as a kid. I think he was like 8 or 12 or something like that. He was, and he began tithing right away. And, you know, look at what, what he's – we still have his stores around today, J.C. Penney stores. Multimillionaire. Why? Because he was a tither, and he was a giver, and he had the ministry of giving. And I think he – didn't he die, and it was doing 90% he was giving away and keeping 10, something like that? I think it was him. If not, it was somebody, it was somebody else. But – it is a story I heard. Isn't that a great? Isn't that a great encouragement to know? Yep. If we put God first, He's not going to let us out. Beat Him in, in our giving. Amen. No stingy givers. We're happy givers, cheerful givers. But these people, they have the ability. It seems like that everything they touch turns to gold, and they just give it away. They they make money, and then they just give it away. <laughs> God has given them the ability to make large amounts of money to give to the church to finance the kingdom. All right. So those are those gifts. Here we go. Number four. These are gifts that celebrate God's presence. These are the worship gifts or the prayer-related gifts. Okay, you're going to like this. Music, the ability to celebrate God's presence through music and to lead the church family in worship. It is very clear in Scripture that music is a spiritual gift. The Bible talks about it in regards to personal and temple worship. God has gifted certain musicians to play instruments and some to sing. It's obvious if you have this gift. You know it usually. It's already in you. have been in there since uh, you were a little kid, and it's real obvious. So if you have the gift of music, then get busy, baby. (laughs) Start serving God in your local church with your music gift. I have a gift of music. That's why I was singing in the choir for so long. I just sing in the choir. I mean, I could do that. I needed to be obedient to God with my gift. You know, and so I'm still looking for the timing and when I can get back into doing that with the music. But it's part of my gifting, too. And there are some of you out there that are the same. Your gift is not to make you money. Your gift is to serve the Lord with. And, of course, the Lord blesses us as we, as we follow him and, and we use our gifts for him. The finances are going to come. Your gifts, a lot of times, as you see yourself get involved in ministry and employing your gifts as a spiritual service to one another, and you see, it, it, it puts God in his place because, and it puts the body of Christ in, in the proper perspective. We are to be servants one of another, and we are serving through using our gifts. This is how we serve God because we're doing it as unto the Lord. But remember, Jesus said that if you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. So as we employ our gifts of service and we, and we get busy in, this, in, the, in, in the house of God and serving him with our gifts and talents, even if we don't know what they are yet, just starting somewhere. You watch if the finances of heaven don't catch up with you. If you have seen some delay in your finances, I mean, there may be a chance that maybe there's just this area in your life where you just have missed it and not gotten plugged in and started serving. Sometimes it's just that missing connection. You plug that into the outlet and bam, there's provision. So that might be for somebody out there right now because that's not in my notes. Amen. Get busy. We're all called to serve. All right. The next one is arts and crafts. <clears throat> the ability to express worship through a variety of art forms. Did you know that this is a spiritual gift? Arts and crafts. I mean, isn't that sound so Susie Homemaker? But, you know, there's guys that are good at crafts too and art. Amen. So, but it's a spiritual gift listed. In fact, in Exodus, and I put it in here for you, Exodus 31.3, it says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill and ability and knowledge and all kinds of crafts, to make an artistic design for work in gold and silver and bronze, to cut set stones. Look at all of this stuff. This is beautiful. To, to cut set stones. A stone cutter. Is a spiritual gift? Yep, right here. It's in here. Right? <clears throat> To work in wood and to engage in all kinds of craftsmanship. 
Moreover, I have appointed Elohib and Ashimach and of the tribe of Dan to help him. I know, I know I didn't say that right, but I don't know how to say it. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything. See, he said, I have given skill. They didn't, it, we have to develop our gifts, but God gives the gift, see? All right, and so, <clears throat> I have given skill to all the craftsmen to make everything I have commanded you. So God gives a commandment and says, we're going to build a church. We're getting a new church in Palmdale. We're property, already, we're, we're, I think it's, well, we call it done at the right price. There's going to be stuff to do. There's going to be, you know, walls that need to be put up. There's going to be electrical outlets. And electricity needs to be laid. There are things to do in the house of God that's going to require somebody to contribute of their gifting. And as we all come together, the work of God gets done. This is how things get done. We are his hands. We are his feet. It is up to us to do the work. Amen. So what did they do here? Verse 7, the tent of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent. The table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand, and all its accessories. The altar of incense, the altar of burnt offerings, and all its utensils. The basin with its stand, and also the woven garments. Okay, so we have seamstress and seamstresses, or however you say it for a man. They're, they're making clothing, right? Woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests, and the anointing oil. So that's another thing that has to be made and done to make this anointing oil and fragrant incense for the holy place. They are to make them just as I commanded you. And in here you see all of these talents and gifts. Baby, you, will, you might be in there. That might be you. And if it is, there's a place for you to serve right here using the gifts that God has placed in you. Amen. I'm so excited to see you people in the chat room having fun and, and getting excited about this. All right. Some are gifted to work with their hands. Others are gifted by God to teach other people how to do it. The ability to build, maintain, or beautify the place of worship for God's glory. Drama falls under this category. Some people are really good with the dramatic. Some are good painters. All of this is related, see. God didn't just give you that gift to be used out there as a hobby. He wants you to use it to beautify his kingdom and his places of worship. The Bible says that when God had the children of Israel build the temple, he gifted certain people with different skill sets. So you can go through that and really... Uh, find yourself in there. And I think I'm going to stop here. Oh, I don't want to stop here. Hey, can you give me five minutes? And I can finish this. What do you think? Dun, 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 dun. Or we could pick it up next week. All right, we'll pick it up next week. All right, so that's it for today. We're going to stop there. And uh, prayerfully that you have found yourself uh, in one of these giftings. And if not, you know, pray. we'll pray together. Let's just pray together right now. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask the Lord to reveal to us what are our gifts are, our gift sets. Help us to discover them, because they are up for us to discover. And we discover as we begin to serve in some capacity. So let's pray. Father, we come before you as a church family, as a, as a kingdom family, those watching our broadcast from all over the world, Lord God, we are called as one body of Christ. We come before you right now, everyone within the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord. I pray for us. I pray, Lord God, for giving all of us revelation knowledge as to what our spiritual gifts are. Help us to discover them. Make it real obvious to us. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Reveal to us. Is it writing? Is it painting? What is it, what is it that you've called us to do? What are those things that turn around and around inside of us that we know is just a, is a gift from you, Lord? Just show us and reveal to us. And then we ask you, Lord, to provide the right place for us to serve in these areas in your kingdom. Open up a, doors of opportunity for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining me today with our Back to Basics class. And I believe that as you go this week, you will further more and more get more revelation on this and see yourself in these scriptures. The Holy Spirit's going to start talking to you. We've asked him to. He will. 
and he's, maybe you'll have a dream. I don't know. But I know that God is in you, and he's not called and gifted you for nothing. He has a plan for you, and he's equipped you with these gifts that you have to fulfill that plan and destiny. So just begin and start with the first thing that's in front of you right now. You know whatever that one thing is, that one thing he's asking you to do. Just do that one thing. And until then, until next, we're not going to be here next week, remember. Now, next week is Mother's Day, so we will have no back to basics next week. But I'll meet you the following week, and we'll pick up, and um, we'll go from here. Amen? All right, thanks for joining me. Love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.